Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crack, it's crack, it's firewood. The summer wood is good. In today's video, I'll show you exactly how to make a wooden bucket. It's pretty neat and it's much cooler than a plastic one. And I did make plans if you want to download those and make one yourself. I'll make two buckets and I'll do that from these scrap pieces of garden sleepers and they're left over from when I gave my carport a facelift a couple of years ago. I would normally put rough sawn timber across the jointer first but I'm just going to break these down into boards on the table saw and I think that'll be good enough. I'm not sure what the wood is and I'm really not the best at IDing wood anyway but it is extremely solid. Some of you may remember that I did make a bucket a couple of years ago. It was one of my very first scrap wood challenge videos where I made the bucket from start to finish, edited the video and uploaded it all in one day. Because of that, there was no narration or explanation. So I've always planned to remake the video. Plus I also need a couple of buckets. You may enjoy watching that original video if only just to see how I got on making the whole thing in just one day. And it really was a challenge. I'll just run those through the thicknesser to get them all down to the same thickness. I make quite a few passes and because they weren't jointed I'll flip them over each time and that should even out any twists. They don't need to be perfect as long as they're pretty straight and flat. Next I need to cut bevels and that's down both edges and also at the same time it gets tapered and gets narrower at the bottom. But before I do that I need to cut a groove on the inside face of all the pieces and that's for the bottom of the bucket to go into. And I'm doing that now while the piece is still square and that will make it easier. I could have used the dado blade, but in the time it would have taken to set that up, I'll already have them done just using a regular blade and two passes. That's all of the grooves cut for the bottom to go into, so next I'll cut the bevel tapers. I've put the dimensions to the jigs in the free plans, which you can download from a link in the description. The jigs are made from two pieces of plywood and they'll be used on the table saw. You could just use a tapering jig, but these angles get pretty confusing and it'd be easy to make mistakes. So if you use these jigs, you really can't go wrong. All of the pieces will be pushed through the table saw with jig one first and then flipped around and cut the opposite bevel on jig two. I cut the angle of this section the wrong way and it would actually still work fine as it is but it's easy enough to recut it. Here's a quick run through of how to use the jig. The side with the groove goes face down onto the table saw and on jig one the groove is at the top end. That sits in there nicely, but when we come to use jig two to do the opposite edge, the groove goes down the bottom end. And because we've just cut a 15 degree uh, bevel off this edge here, and the plywood is only half inch, it doesn't actually sit against there nicely. So to raise that edge up, I'll nail on a strip of plywood. There's one more thing to do. This section here, I left too long and I need to trim a little bit off. So I'll use this piece here to mark where I need to trim that, somewhere around there. And I can set up the blade on the table saw to start cutting at that point there. It isn't super critical where you cut as long as the cut goes all the way from the top to bottom. If you cut into the board more than you need to, you'll just end up with a bucket that's smaller in diameter. <laughs> 
You could sneak up on the full width by nudging the fence over a touch with each pass and do that until you get a full cut from top to bottom of the board. When you've set up the first board and you're happy, you can go through and cut the rest of them. That's all of the bevels cut down one edge and I'm spinning the boards around so there's less chance I'll make a mistake. Next I'll set up jig two and again I want to take off just enough without going into the board more than I need to. I'm not 100% happy with it. I think it's a bit tall and a bit thin at the bottom. And if I were to do it again, I would have put the tapers at two degrees on each side of the stave rather than two and a half degrees. And then the sides would have had less of an angle. I think that would have been better. But what I am going to do, because I think it's too tall, I'm going to take a couple of inches off the bottom. And I think that will look a lot better as the original bucket has similar angles and the base is the same size, but it just looks much better proportion not being so tall. I had to set the bevel gauge to two and a half degrees to keep the ends even and to keep the stave symmetrical. I did one first to see how it looks and I reckon it looks much better so I'll do the other one and then I'll cut the grooves for the bottom. For the bottom piece I'll use the scraps from cutting the staves at the start of the video. They need gluing together and to do that I'm using waterproof glue. I do still have a few off cuts of garden sleepers so I could have made the bottom out of one piece but I just like the idea of using up these scraps. I plane the board down to 12 millimeters or half an inch and next I'll measure the size that I need to make the bottom pieces. For the original bucket I made the bottom round and then I chiseled the groove in the staves to try and match it but I think a better option will be to just make a 12 sided bottom to fit. I'll start with the square then mark out a 12 sided polygon which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head but I'm sure somebody will tell me. After drawing a circle to the outer limits of the board, I've set the bevel gauge to 30 degrees and I'll mark where that touches the circle and go all the way around leaving a 12 sided polygon. I set the bevel guide to 30 degrees and I actually only needed to mark one of those 30 degree lines on the bottom and I need that to line up and set a stop and then it's just a case of cutting it to shape. I make four cuts and then flip the piece over and then make another four cuts leaving the final shape. It's too wide for the groove so next I'll tilt the blade over on the table saw and I'll taper the underside. The taper will wedge into the slot and hopefully make a sealed joint. I've got no definite measurements here, I'll just go for it, taking some off and then I'll test fit it and make adjustments. It needs more taking off so I'll nudge the fence over and take another pass. If you're unsure about making this cut on the table saw then you really shouldn't do it. Your hands are over the blade which isn't ideal but it would be easy enough just to use a block plane and take the bevels down that way instead. The wood that I'm using here doesn't plane easily at all and that's the reason I'm using the table saw. So. 
It still needs a touch more, so I'll make the angle more acute. That fits great with the stave upright, but the stave needs to angle over, so I'll take a small amount off this top edge all the way around. That's fitting well, so next I'll move on to the steel rings and they hold the staves and compress them together to hopefully make the bucket watertight. After marking so far down, I'm measuring around the bucket to get the length of the top ring. I'll use this 25 by 3 millimeter or an inch by eighth inch mild steel flat bar. I'll try and make the rings using basic tools just to show that anyone can do it and you don't need expensive equipment. Saying that though, I will weld the rings together, but I do have another method if you don't weld and I'll explain that later on. I'm bending the ring into a somewhat kind of circle, but it really doesn't need to be perfect and it can be adjusted when it's joined together. I'm looking for flat spots and I'm putting a bit more bend into those until it looks a bit more even. It's not perfect, but it's definitely good enough. The straight sides of the ring don't match the sides of the bucket, so I need to shape the ring to match. It's very easy to do, you just need to hammer along one edge which will stretch the one side of the ring. After making a full pass I'll check to see how it's looking, and that's looking good but it still needs some more. It may look like a lot of work, but it really isn't. It only takes about a minute to go all the way around once. I'll put it on top of an untapered ring just so you can see how it's stretched. This is where everything started to go wrong and the rings wouldn't wedge onto the bucket. The sides have a bit too much angle even though they're the same as the original bucket and that worked out okay. Anyway, I'll make adjustments to the jigs, I'll recut the staves and lessen the angle of the sides of the bucket. It didn't take too long at all to do those, so let's see if it made a difference. That seems better, even though the difference in angle isn't much at all. Now the ring is too big though, so I'll adjust that. I'll cut it off camera, and um, while I'm marking where to make the second cut, I'll explain the other method of joining the ends of the ring. You could overlap the ends by around an inch, drill a hole through and then bolt it together. Then you could grind the head of the bolt right down much thinner. If that's positioned in the center of the stave, there'll be enough room for it behind the ring. Even though I filed the welds on the ring the first time, I'm using the angle grinder from now on. You could even just leave the welds on. <laughs> 
cut seems promising, so I made the rest of the rings. The only thing I did different was to use a diagonal peen hammer, which was perfect, but any hammer will work, and I'll take any chance I can to use this awesome Everly Works one. That's all the rings ready to go, and this bucket here, I actually trimmed the bevels and I reduced the angle of the taper again. I left this one as it was, and we'll see if it makes any difference. But I think the real reason that the rings aren't gripping the bucket is this wood is extremely dense and everything just skates across it. It's, there's just no grip there. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take the corners off slightly. I do like the facets and I did plan on leaving them. So I'm just going to take a little bit off there and there'll be a bit more surface area to grip the inside of the ring. I'll put the top ring on and take down the corners so far. Then I'll swap the top ring for the bottom one and I'll finish the other end of the corners. I was going to plane them, but then I thought the rough finish of the saw rasp may help with some grip. I should mention that I'm using a piece of half inch flat bar to hammer the rings on and the bigger piece that I'm using for the lower ring is heavy enough on its own without the hammer. That's much better but this one ring needs adjusting one last time. It only took five minutes to do as I've done a few of them now and I'm getting the hang of it. Next I'll make some brackets for the handles and I'll do that at a 3mm flat bar. I could have shaped the end in a minute on the belt grinder, but I wanted to show that it can be done with a hacksaw and a file, and it only took about five minutes anyway, with no dust or sparks. I'm eyeballing the center of the stave, but the bolt and the scrap of plywood will keep the height of all the brackets fairly consistent. Before I put the brackets on, I'll do the final fit of the bucket, which needs sealer in the bottom joint. I'll take the rings off and carefully take the bottom out and hopefully do that without it all falling apart. Because of any wood movement across the grain, I'll take a small amount off either side with the block plane and I also took some off the edges next to those as well. I'm using ground flax seed for the sealer, which is the traditional way buckets were sealed. It gets mixed into a paste and pushed into the grooves. It will fill up any voids and if water gets through to it, it will swell up and seal the joint. I'm pretty sure the bottom joint on my original bucket wasn't the tightest fit and it worked on that perfectly. Just to let you know, if the bucket does dry out, then the movement in the wood can open up slightly here and there. I've let the original bucket dry out about a dozen times. It's leaked slightly when it's been refilled, but as the bucket hydrates, which it only takes about half an hour or so, it swells back up and closes up any leaks. The last time it dried out though, the bottom started leaking, so while I have the flaxseed mixed, I'll take it apart and reseal it. It may look a mess, but I reckon it stood up pretty well, considering that I've been catching steel grinder dust from underneath the belt grinder, and it has a thick layer of rust attached to it. This is the first time I've messed with the rings, even when it's leaked, I've just let it rehydrate. <laughs> 
I did already have the flaxseed mixed up, but other than that, it only took five minutes to reseal it. You could use a plastic bucket without the need of any maintenance, but a wooden bucket is just much cooler. I'm nearly finished. I just need to chamfer all the edges to finish it off. I also gave it a quick sand just to smooth out the rough corners left by the saw rasp. To fix the brackets I'll use carriage bolts and I could just put this through from the back like this one and then put the nut on and chop it off but I think it looked better this way around. It just means I have to file this hole out square to accept the head of the bolt. I got all the bolts ready and cut them down to length off camera. The last thing to do is make a handle and for that I'm using 4mm fencing wire. It already has a hook on the one end so I'll use that and then chop it to length. The handle needs a grip and I'll keep things simple and use these pieces of dowel. I'll eyeball the center, then drill halfway through from one end and then all the way through from the other. I let the dowel spin on the drill bit and then try and straighten it by putting some pressure on where needed until it spins fairly true and then the two sides of the hole should be close enough to meet. I realised that the hooks needed to face inward so I bent them back the other way and that will let the handle clear the rim and rest on the side of the bucket. Now to test them and I'm really not confident at all with any of them. You can see the new ones are leaking straight away but the old one is fine and that's with a quick fix up with heaps of crud still left on it. This was half an hour later, I left it a while and then this was two hours later. They still all have water in, even the nearest one. I then moved them to a dry spot just to see if they were still leaking and the old one just shows how softer wood is the way to go with no leaks at all. I left them overnight and the leaks had slowed right down. I then put them on another dry patch and this was 20 minutes later and I think the leaks have just about closed up. I've made changes to the plans and reprinted them and I want to make another quick bucket off camera from softwood and I'm going to use this rough sawn cypress. It took an hour to mill and cut all the staves including making the jigs and I've also glued up the bottom piece. It took about another hour or so to make the rings and the brackets for the handles and I also shaped the bottom and it didn't need any finicking this time, it went together very easily. I really wish that I'd use this wood from the start, anyway it took about three hours to make the whole thing from start to finish. Fingers crossed this one works so let's try it out. It did leak very, very slightly, but hardly anything, and I honestly didn't hit the rings on that hard, so I could have probably closed it up even better, and it did swell up and seal in no time at all. So the moral of the story is, is use a softer wood and you'll have no issues. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. You may also enjoy watching the original video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.